Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. Today I'm going to be showing you how to find the arc length of the curve y equals 2x to the 3 halves for the domain of 0 to 4. So this basically just means from x equals 0 to x equals 4. So really when you're trying to find the arc length, the easiest place to start is just the formula for arc length. And this is one of the formulas on my Calc 2 study guide that I recently came out with. There's a link down in the description so you can check that out. It's available for instant download. It's only a couple bucks, super affordable. So go click that, download that, print it out, save it on your computer, whatever you want to do. And I'll show you how to use this formula. And I've got a ton of other videos on my channel where I show you how to use all the other formulas. A few more coming out in the next few weeks. So you can really get the most use out of that and really make it worth your money. But let's go ahead and just jump right into this one. So let's, like I said, we're going to start with that formula. We'll just jot that down real quick and then we'll, I'll show you how to use it. So here's the formula we're going to be using. Uh, and one thing I do want to point out, there are a few different arc length formulas on that study guide, and there are a few different arc length formulas in general. This is the one that you want to use whenever you have a curve that is defined as y equals some function of x. There's other formulas that you can use if you have x equals some function of y, or if you have a parametric curve, which is something a little bit different, but that's a topic for another video. But this is probably the most straightforward way to do it when you just have y equals a bunch of stuff with x. So you can see, really this formula, it just has the integral from a to b, where those are the x values that you want to find the arc length of this function over. In this case, it's going to be 0 to 4. So we already know that the bounds of our integral are going to be 0 to 4. And then we just have the square root of 1 plus the derivative of our function with respect to x. So we're just going to want to find the derivative of this function with respect to x and plug that in there. So the derivative of this with respect to x can just be found using the power rule. So y prime is just going to be, we're going to bring the power down in front, so bring the 3 halves down in front and multiply it by 2. So 2 times 3 halves times x and then we're going to lower our power by 1. So 3 halves minus 1 would be the same as 3 halves minus 2 halves, which is just 1 half. And of course, this will simplify by these 2's canceling out, and we're just going to get y prime equals 3x to the 1 half. So we're going to get this being plugged in for dy dx. So that's going to give us the square root of 1 plus 3x to the 1 half, all squared, and then we're going to integrate this with respect to x. So let's think about how to simplify this. So, you know, really when you're finding the arc length, this formula is kind of a pain sometimes because we're, we're trying to integrate something with a square root, which is usually pretty challenging to find this, the integral of something that is all trapped within a square root. So a lot of times these problems require a little bit of rearranging and simplifying to get it to a form where we can actually integrate it. So in this case, we're kind of lucky because having x to the 1 half and then up to the second power, those powers are basically just going to cancel out because x to the 1 half is the same as the square root of x. So we just have the square root of x squared, which is just x. Obviously, we have this 3 being squared as well. So we're going to get 1 plus 3 squared is 9 and then the square root of x squared is x. So what's in the square root here is just going to simplify to 1 plus 9x. And then the rest of our stuff is just going to stay the same. So now we have this square root that we have to integrate, which, like I said, is not super convenient. Probably the best way to do this kind of a problem, though, is going to be with u substitution. So what we can do is we can just say u equals all the stuff that's inside the parentheses here. And the reason why this works out nicely is because now our du is just going to be the derivative of this function, which is just 9 times dx. So whenever you have uh, something like this where it's just a linear function as like some inner function, a lot of times u substitution and just calling that inner function your u ends up working out pretty nicely because our du is just going to be a constant. So 
let's go ahead and, and do this substitution here. We can use this equation to solve for dx, which would be dx equals du over nine. And now we can plug this in for, or plug u into our equation, plug this in for dx in our equation. And let's see what we get doing that. So we'd get the square root of u times du over nine. So the other thing we want to keep in mind is we need to adjust the bounds of our integral here. So adjusting the bounds basically just means plugging in these x values into our u that we came up with. So plugging in zero here is going to give us nine times zero, which is zero, plus one is one. So our lower bound on our u function is now going to be one. And similarly, we want to plug in four in for x. So nine times four is going to give us 36, plus one is 37. So our upper bound is 37. So now if we integrate this function instead from 1 to 37, that should be equivalent to this function integrated from 0 to 4. So first of all, we can pull out a 1 9th because it's a constant. And the other thing we want to do is rewrite our square root of u as u to the 1 half. So generally when you're integrating a square, square root of something, Writing it as that thing to the one half is going to make it a little easier to integrate because to integrate this function, we can just apply the power rule. So the power rule says that we're going to increase our power by one. So one half plus one is going to be three halves. And then we're going to multiply this by the reciprocal of our new power. So two thirds. So this is the antiderivative of u to the one half. And then we're going to evaluate this from one to 37. And then don't forget, we're going to also have to multiply it by 1 ninth at the end. So plugging in these bounds, we're going to get 2 thirds times 37 to the 3 halves minus 2 thirds times 1 to the 3 halves, which is just 1. And then we're going to have all that times 1 ninth. So really 37 to the 3 halves is not going to be a very nice number. So probably just leaving it as 37 to the 3 halves is probably the easiest thing to do. But we can simplify this a bit by pulling 2 thirds out of here. So 2 thirds times 1 ninth would be 2 over 27 times 37 to the 3 halves minus 1. Because if we pull a 2 thirds out, that's going to leave us with a 1 in that kind of as a placeholder. So this is going to be the arc length of the function y equals 2x to the 3 halves between x equals 0 and x equals 4 is going to be given by this. So like I said, this arc length formula is on my Calc 2 study guide. There's a link down in the description. I highly recommend checking that out. I'm going to have a bunch more videos on my channel uh, showing you how to use all those formulas so you can really get your money's worth. But if you found this video helpful, give it a like. Please subscribe to my channel. That's the best way to help support my channel so I can keep making more videos like this. Thanks and see you next time.